All right, y'all, welcome back. Thanks for listening to the Dark Sports Podcast. This is NFL Week 3. This week, I'm going to be talking about the Giants at 49ers. That was the last Thursday night football game. Buffalo Bills at Washington Commanders. Denver Broncos at the Miami Dolphins. Chicago Bears at Kansas City Chiefs. Tennessee Titans at the Cleveland Browns. Philadelphia Eagles at Tampa Bay. And the Detroit Lions game at the Packers. That's going to be the one that's coming up on Thursday. Okay, so quick note. People may be wondering why I put the bet slips on here. Well, there's two reasons for that. Number one is just to show you that I'm not just somebody talking. I actually know what I'm talking about, and I'm actually putting something at risk. That's how confident I am. Number two, I mean, I'm just showing you guys like dollar or five dollars, but I mean, you could take that to ten cent or a hundred dollars, depending on what your comfort level is. You know, people have different budgets, so forth and so on. But there is a lot of money to be made in predicting the future. I'll just leave it at that. I'm doing pretty good over here, and I didn't get it off of YouTube ad revenue. So take that as you will. Okay, the first game I want to talk about is this Giants at 49ers game. So just to recap, that's the one I predicted. I predicted that the 49ers are going to win that game, primarily just because they seem to be really hot, and then the Giants didn't have Saquon. So that's exactly what happened. Real quick, 49ers are looking like the best team in the NFC right now. This was some easy money. I'll take it. Thank you very much. Buffalo Bills at the Commanders. When Buffalo beat the Raiders, I was saying how I wasn't that impressed because even though they did win by a lot, they should have had a lot more. The Raiders are a bad team, and I was just expecting a lot more. So they showed me they showed me what I wanted to see in this game. This is exactly what I was talking about. When you are playing like championship level football or you're trying to play championship level football, you have to show total domination. And that's what they showed because when you get to the playoffs, and again, that's what this is all about, it's going to be a team who's hot like the commanders, who's thinking they can win, and you got to shut them down. And that's what they did, primarily the defense here. If you look at the stats, you'll see here that I believe they had seven sacks Commanders were only able to get one out of nine third down conversions. Buffalo, four turnovers. That's not going to get it one. So Buffaloes were looking good. This was a good, good win for me. I'll take the money, Stefan. I appreciate the yardage. I'm happy with this. Denver Broncos at Miami Dolphins. So everyone's heard about this game. This was an embarrassment, man. And I was saying last week when, like, Tyreek was breakdancing in the end zone on the Patriots game. I remember right after the first touchdown here, he was out in the stand with the fans. Dolphins are just looking really, really good right now. Historic blowout. They're doing the conga line. The bad thing about this game is it seemed like Denver, like, gave up. The defense gave up. And that was kind of pitiful because right now, This is not even looking like a professional football team. The fans deserve better. They got to do better. But yeah, that was terrible. Honorable mention is going to go to the Kansas City Chiefs. Yes, they were playing the Bears, but the offense looked better than it did when they were playing Jacksonville. Uh, The defense really showed up in this game. Justin Fields couldn't get anything going on the ground. Uh, The defense neutralized everything else. So much so that I think they sat Mahomes and Kelsey in like the third quarter. I mean, when when they sit your starters, it's basically saying that you're no longer a threat to us. But between the Dolphins and this Chiefs game, I had this nice parlay going with Dolphins yards and Chiefs winning and Patrick Mahomes yards. So that paid off well for me. Chiefs looking good. Tennessee Titans at the... Cleveland Browns. For people who really know football, this was a really, really good defensive game. And there was a lot of things going on in this game. First of all, Cleveland Browns coming off that, man, horrific knee injury to Nick Chubb on Monday Night Football. They really rallied in this game. Miles Garrett, just a crazy amount of sacks. And for the Tennessee Titans, I was thinking to myself, like, is is Ryan Tannehill that bad? And I owe him an apology. He is bad, but it's the O line. I mean, the O line they couldn't get, they couldn't get anything going with DeAndre Hopkins. They couldn't get the run game going with King Henry. 
I mean, that's the offensive line. This this was a really good defensive game, and the score is not really indicative. You know, this was pretty close the whole game, but this was a really good victory for Cleveland. But Tennessee Titans are still my favorite to win the AFC South, and uh, Jacksonville Jaguars, I believe, were favored. So as you can see, they're both tied right now at one and two, so there's still a chance we come out on top of this. Texans will probably be bad, and Colts will be bad also. So, Tennessee, you guys got to figure something out. Tennessee Titans, I need you to win the AFC South. And last but not least, last night's game, Philadelphia Eagles at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I told you guys last week that Jalen Hurts doesn't look the same, and he still didn't to me. This game, the final score is different than what actually happened in the game or what it would have you think. I watched this entire game. Yes, the Eagles put up a lot of yards. They did. But if you look at the red zone stats, they weren't really able to get a lot of stuff going in the red zone. And I mean, to me, Jalen Hurts still is playing like he's hurt or something. It just He's just off. So the, the, the play calling is still off. But it doesn't matter. When you have a defense as good as the Philadelphia Eagles, a lot of big dudes, uh, they got a safety, you know, they're winning. So since they're 3-0, I'll just shut up and take the money. Next game. And coming up this week on Thursday Night Football, you have the Lions versus the Packers. So here's my prediction on this one, and I want to kind of walk you through how it is I came up with a prediction. So the NFL is pretty much a copycat league, and there's a lot of parity. That means that pretty much the teams are mainly evenly matched in general, and they tend to do the same things. Packers and the Lions, I'm looking at the Packers, right? And I'm thinking to myself, the problem I see there is with the quarterback, Jordan Love. I mean, he just seems kind of careless with the football. And when you're playing the Detroit Lions and you got Aiden Hutchinson coming off the edge, I mean, it just kind of seems like a recipe for trouble. I kind of see him maybe having two picks. You got to look at, like, who the difference makers are. And the difference maker in this matchup, to me, I think is going to be my boy number 14, Amon Ra St. Brown. That's right, the sun god. I just think overall the Detroit Lions are a better team. So going in to Lambeau Field, I'm rolling with the Detroit Lions. I'll take that minus 115. You got to risk it sometimes. When I come back on the next week, we'll see if I got it right. So that was my analysis on the week three games and my pick for the first week four games. I want to thank you for taking your time to listen to the Dark Sports Podcast. I'll see you next week. Let me know what you thought as well.